Please, rain. Please, please, we need the rain in Texas. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Got a little home vlogger for you here today, but we are gonna be hitting the water. If you have been watching the recent videos, you know that I have been full maintenance mode, fix up mode on the crispy collector, and we have got it. Not pristine, but she's ready to hit the lake. The only thing I'm waiting on is an oil filter to change the oil on that thing, complete that, and then we're gonna hit the lake. But I thought while I was on this maintenance kick, I would go ahead and change the oil in my in my Pro XS, which by the way, is so much easier than changing the oil in your car or truck. It's incredible. See this little port right here? That is an oil draining valve. And all you gotta do is hook up a little hose. Heck, you could just put a pan right under that if you want to, unscrew it, and all the oil will dump out of your engine. So definitely something you wanna make sure is snug when you're out fishing. It's just no mess and it's user friendly. So we'll go hit the lake, make sure the oil levels are good afterwards and we'll be good to go. So it's also family dinner night and we got some catfish thawing out. Literally the one catfish, uh, one of the catfish that we caught the other day on the jug lines me and Stephanie, that one catfish is gonna feed all of us. So I took out the belly meat and surprisingly, female full of eggs. I'm talking yoked, huge egg sac. I kept it. So if you've ever wondered what a big old fat catfish egg sac tastes like, stay tuned. V8 sounding pretty, looking pretty. I'm just gonna run it. I'm gonna run it top speed for a little bit. And really all I wanna do out here fishing wise is just go throw a top water. Post rain, little nutrients coming to the top, little shad skis, getting some of that fresh new stuff coming into the water. Just throw a top water, see what happens. Cooking with Crisco. Just hit 70. Alright, let's cast a line. Little mud line cranking. Ah, I know I said I was going through the top water, but there's just good mud line here that looks crankable. I just unstagged my crate bait off a rock and a fish hit it. Oh, it's a drum. It's a big gas for goo. Not a big one, but look at that thing. Looks like it belongs in the ocean. Look at that shad eater. One drum, one white bass, no largemouth bites coming off the dangle, but motor ran beautifully now we're just going to check the oil which is really easy to do on these mercs there's actually a separate compartment right here look at that it's like a little hidden door 
So we'll just pull the old dipstick out. And we're full. We're right to that last little bead right there. So we're good. Oil looks great. Levels look good. We are good to go. Nice little drizzly rain. Chickens are loving it right now. Some of them are kind of taking a little chicken snooze, midday chicken snooze. Chicken check is they're getting big. These are my cockerels. A lot of cockerels running around. So I was really hoping to get at least three hens and we're only getting two. Let's play a little game. Spot the cockerel. Let's see if you guys know what a, what a future rooster looks like. There's three of them right there. There's another one right there. And there's my little shy one in the corner. Now that is for sure a hen. And the reason I know that is because she doesn't have any red on her on her comb. She basically has no comb, but it's kind of yellowish still. Bright red combs. That one's got a pea comb, but it's bright red. Thick legs, and they're already starting to fight. So that's how I know that these are going to be roosters. That right there is going to be one of my hens. See, she's got hardly any comb, but it's still pink and she's got this little peachy color that's coming out from the old red that she was sired with so I think I'm gonna call her peaches some say you never know until they grow but I'm just telling y'all going on my gut instincts I think we got five cocks my catfish queen bringing in the big cats we got a smorgasbord of blue catfish here and a sampling a, a little bit of it all. So this is actually a giant row sack out of the blue catfish. Humongous. And this is the belly meat. So catfish, a big catfish like that has a lot of good meat on its belly that you could just take a little extra time and get off. And then obviously we have the big fillets. And I'm going to be doing my very special blackened catfish that OSG loves. And we also brought some homegrown tomatoes. Where are them tomatoes at, huh? They're, they're in the fridge. You want me to... Uh, I let's show the folks at home the fruits of our labor. You know, gardening is a lot like just... Raising a child. <laughs> well, I would... Well, there's Raising some similarities. There is. You put a lot of passion into it, nurturing care, and then... What do you get out of it? You get like a couple of small little nuggets at the end. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Are they going to be sweet? Are they going to be sour? So these... Oh, you already cut them. I already cut them. These are store-bought. If you can see the color change. These are store-bought. These are all... Oh, hard. no way. Yeah, ours look very I feel like juicy. I, I need to take a taste right now. We have not yet tried one of our own homegrown tomatoes. Why don't you try one of these? You're going to let me go little, little guys, yeah. Okay. I feel like this is the fruit of your labor because you're the one I, that's... I have uh, put in a lot of tomato work. Okay. Very sweet. Can you tell a difference between the store-boughts? I mean, they definitely look different. They look different. Well, they're definitely redder, juicier. These are just, they're pale. These were big. These are all very small. They were about this big. Way more juicier. This is, this is kind of crazy because we're having a fully organic dinner. Pretty darn close. Fully uh, our own harvestings, right? Let me all try right. one. Okay. Come on now. That tastes like a $400 tomato. That's probably <laughs> about a $400 tomato. The gardening supplies, we had, to, we had to make it look like Joanna Gaines was out there. Yeah, you can't just throw it in a bucket. You have a couple that are just thrown in a bucket and they look pretty bad. Although those are probably gonna be the most juiciest ones, to be honest. Okie dokie, let's start off with the spices for this catfish. I've showed this a little bit in other videos, but it kind of varies each time. So we're gonna focus on the blackening and that's gonna be on the fillets the eggs and the belly, we're gonna fry. LFD is gonna help us out with that. So a little mixture of spices, we're gonna go with some smoked paprika. I'm gonna put this in a 
shallow pan, a little more smoked paprika, Zadeco dust. Family says it's pretty good, so we'll try it. What's in this, Mom? I don't know. It's Cajun. I don't know. I don't know. It's Cajun. It's Cajun, sweetheart. All right, and then we have literally Cajun. <laughs> OSG just labeled that one Cajun. <laughs> That's the blackening rub. Yes, so this is blackening rub. I don't know who makes it. I, I wish I could help you guys out more. Maybe OSG knows more details. I think it's a Kroger brand. It's a Kroger. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with Kroger? <laughs> She's a Tom Thumb gal, okay? Uh -huh. She looks down on us Kroger shoppers. Although I wish we had an H-E-B, we'd live there. All right, so now we have this mixture. We'll just kind of roll around a little bit. Probably just gonna have to spread it out with my fingers. Just trying to be cleanly about it. Have you washed your hands? Nah, <laughs> not in a minute. And I've been changing oils and cleaning catfish. Go wash your hands. Uh, it's right there. <laughs> day something. Men don't wash their hands, all right? And I, I vacuum sealed these. I usually do that, uh, even if I'm gonna use them pretty quick, it's just easy for OSG, go in the fridge, grab it out. I usually label it. You know, sometimes there's just like body parts in there from animals and <laughs> shouldn't know what they are. So I'm like, hey, grab the thing that says this. And usually I'll label it something like for frying or for baking or- Extremely stew helpful. Stew or very chewy or something <laughs> like that. So we, we want a little bit of dampness on the meat so that the, um, the spices will stick, but you don't want it to be dripping. So just enough, if you, if you have time where you can kind of lay them out a little bit beforehand, that's nice too. But you do want a little bit of moisture so it'll stick. So here you go. Now we're just going with a little, throw it in there and rub it. And kind of <coughs> reshake it. See how fully coated that is? That's what you want. And then I'll just, I'll usually give it a dab on the front there, and that one's done. Where's my, where's my mop? <laughs> mop, I don't know where her stuff is. <laughs> mop, the meatloaf. All right, so we'll put that on there. Plop and dab. The plop and dab. Plop and dab. And you gotta have a lot in there. You gotta have a lot of spice so that you can get all these nice and covered. You know, some people don't like really spicy stuff. Um, and this, this smells really strong, but it, it seems like when you cook it up, some of that hotness is cooked out of it. Uh, I'm sure there's ways you can like really step up the heat, but for the you know family outing, family dinner, we don't want to get too crazy with it. Here we go. We got our cast iron skillet, medium high heat. And we're gonna throw these on here. Ooh, that's the sound of tasty right there. Yes, sir. I'm just gonna kind of roll around this butter a little bit. Get the edges nice and brown. And then when this is, when one side is kind of getting crispy, I'll flip it once and then we're gonna take it to the oven, already preheated 375 for about eight to 10 minutes, maybe 12, given that this fish is, is really thick. So there, it's actually so big, barely have enough room to cook it in, in one cast iron. So we're actually gonna, we're gonna do two. Needs a roll, needs a little butter roll. There it goes. Oh, yeah. it's got a nice blacken on there. When a catfish curls, does that mean it's done? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because um, I baked it the other day and it was curled and I thought it was it'll, done. It'll like start curling almost immediately. Okay. Uh, just from the heat. But it doesn't doesn't mean it's done. When a fish is done, especially a white fish like this, you, sh you should start to see some of the muscles start to separate. And you'll get that really white, clean uh, inside look at that fish. You know, it's like when the juices are trying to come out. That's usually how I tell it when it starts to separate. Now the other catfish that you brought in on the jug line the other day, 
Um, I don't know what I don't know how what happened with that fish. I was not there for you cooking it. But I just baked it, and it was that was not it. <laughs> Whatever oh, this, I did. This this is terrible. Like see oh. how this this pan is oh. something wrong with it. All right, because we're, we're it's migrating. not it's not blackening. We're migrating. Here. All right, we'll go ahead and throw these in the oven now. Water sizzling. We'll set a timer. I'm going to say it's going to be 12 minutes. We have a little bit of difference between the two fish. One was kind of cooking faster than the other, so I'm blackening. I don't feel great about it. I'll be honest. No, I, no. I don't feel great. We moved the fish a couple of times. When you move the fish, the seasoning starts to separate and it sort of rips fish. What's really cool is after you put it in the oven, it's almost like it releases that. So if it's starting to stick, if you don't flip it, you throw it in there, it's like the juices settle out and then it unsticks and you just scrape it out, you put it on a pilaf and you are good to go, okay, John style. Now we have the catfish bellies and jellies. Mmm, mmm. Mama gonna like that. It's interesting. It, it sort of started out as a like a more cream corn, yellow color, and now it's like this beautiful orange. Looks like we'd be using it for salmon bait or something. Salmon eggs. This thing might get a little crazy. Might pop pretty hard. Oh. Not crazy at all. Ooh, it's growing. You may start popping. The dog is like, what are y'all getting ready to feed me? I had never seen one of those before. A minute and 20 seconds left for our 12 minute countdown on the catfish. I have a feeling it might, might just take a, a smidge longer. Flip. Ooh, it's sort of like a sausage. Like a giant shrimp, you know. You ever have a big fried catfish roe growing up in South Georgia? I have, but they were like about half that size at maximum. Little micros. I've never cooked them this big. I mean, this thing's these things are huge. Timer's going off. Yeah. Hey ya! Okay, I feel like we came back a little bit on the color is good. Uh, the pan just, we boo-booed. We boo-booed, shifted too much. Um, I don't know if you guys can see though, in, the, in, the, in this pan here, instead of looking like really dry and getting crusty to where the, the seasoning will just rip right off, scooping it out, it's, it's actually pretty moist and uh, that seasoning will sort of like re-adhere adhere. and that butter really seems to kind of soak into everything and it helps a lot. Look at this. Oh yeah, hot nuclear fish lava. This is why your mother wanted me to go. Ooh, outside. popped again. Yeah. So those, are, those aren't like little tiny eggs. Those are big boys. I knew they were going to pop. I should have put the lid on. Woo. You think it's done when it's popping like that? probably pretty close. Wow. That looks like a creature that lives on the bottom of the ocean and some coral maybe. Oh, it looks like a donut. Let's break one open. Did you say it looks like a, a donut? It looks like a donut. Like a, yeah, you know, a fried donut. <laughs> a half donut. I don't know, I thought it looked like a bratwurst. Oh. Still hot and still clear. hot. That reminds me of boudin. That's what it looks like. Yeah. It looks like boudin. All right, guys, here, here is, is the thing you're probably most interested in. The roe, the catfish roe. It's dry, it looks dry. It's got an odd smell. It 
It tastes like a, um... Soggy Rice Krispie Treat in the texture, but it's like hard... No, I take that back. It's like hard rice. Like rice that is not fully cooked. Doesn't taste bad. It's just a... Uh, it's hard to eat. It's hard to eat. If I was really hungry and I was out by the lake camping, that's all I had, I would, I would eat all this. I would take my time. Probably take me three hours to eat it, but we have the bellies and we have the fillets that are amazing. So we're going to go enjoy those now. Catfish delectable and we're gonna try to go get more I wanted to actually today and I made up a, a bunch more jugs and we're ready to deploy these bad boys but I started changing the oil in the motor and I thought I had the right oil filter and then I went to go put it in and I was like oh no I got the wrong size so that so the oil's just been drained out of the motor and I want to see how this thing performs and put the catfish lines out and put more of those delicious things in a cast iron and skillet and eat them. I can seriously eat that a couple times a week for the rest of my life. It's so awesome. I'm leaving in the morning to go fish with Mike and Lojo in another state uh, that I've never fished in. It should be an interesting experience, but when I get back, we're gonna pop the oil filter in this thing, put some lube in it, and go run it and run these jugs as well. So you guys stay tuned for that. Thanks for chilling with me on today's vlog. I will see you guys back in the great outdoors on the next one. Thank you.